So pneumonia. What is pneumonia? You may be thinking, what the heck am I doing here? Why did I black this out? What is pneumonia? The reason why I ask you that is because it's such a simple thing. But I remember I didn't know what the heck pneumonia was. I knew it was a respiratory infection. I knew it was severe, but what? why is it severe? What? I don't know, maybe I'm just not, not exposed enough to medicine before I came to med school. But... I just want to, I ask this question because maybe some of you are in the same position as me. In that case, I want to explain to you what the heck pneumonia is. Pneumonia is due, it's infection with inflammation of the alveoli or the interstitial tissue of the lung. So it's basically an uh, infection of the lung. So I just made all this drama just to tell you it's an infection of the lung. And the infection usually arises from aspiration into the lung of pathog pathogens either from the air or from the stomach contents. So either way, the, either stomach contents go back up the esophagus and then it goes down back. Remember, so remember, esophagus and, and the trachea are next to each other. So it goes up the esophagus and then back into the trachea or just straight from the mouth into the trachea. And you get this bacteria that can now enter your lungs and cause infection and cause inflammation of the alveola and the interstitial tissue. Now, what symptoms are you going to get in a pneumonia? Okay, symptoms, it's a severe infection, basically. Severe infections, you get severe infection symptoms. Severe respiratory infectious symptoms. So, what do I mean by that? You can get high fevers and chills, severe malaise. You, just re you feel really sick. You get really messed up with, this, with pneumonia, okay? You can't get out of bed. You're real messed up. I'm also going to take this chance. I'm going to break our flow here and ask you, what the heck is a fever? How, how do I define a fever? Because I was asked that question once upon a time, and I didn't know. At what point do we have a fever? Is it 99 degrees Fahrenheit, 90, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 101 degrees Fahrenheit? Or in the case of Celsius, is it 37, 37.5, 38? And I want to tell you the answer right now. At least in the USA, the answer is 38 degrees Celsius equals to 100.4 Fahrenheit. Anything below that, 100.3 Fahrenheit is not a fever in our, at least in the hospital where I was taught at. Okay, 100.2, also not a fever, but you're febrile once you hit that magic 38 degrees Celsius, okay? Now, other symptoms of pneumonia, now that I've gone off topic enough, cough, perlent sputum, okay? Just because you have a cough with perlent sputum doesn't mean that you, that you have a pneumonia, but if you don't have that, you probably don't have pneumonia, okay? That's like a hallmark feature of pneumonia. If you don't have, okay, and otherwise, just respiratory distress. You have infection in your lung, you're gonna have problems breathing. You're gonna have, if you're breathing fast, you're gonna be shortness of breath. It's all very, uh, this is such a fat thing here, but it's all pretty simple. It's severe infection, severe respiratory infection. On exam, you're gonna get, because you're gonna get consolidation, okay, there's like a big infection here. It's gonna, it's, it's like almost makes it more solid. It's all this infectious stuff. You're gonna get decreased breath sounds at that point, because air is not gonna get through there, and it's gonna be dull to percussion due to consolidation. And then to diagnose, simple x-ray, and then you just, you get some cultures, you get, you culture both the sputum and the blood, okay? Culture the sputum and the blood, and you x-ray. Now, on the x-ray, you're gonna see, there's three different patterns of pneumonia that you can see. It's gonna be a low bar, a bronchi pneumonia, and an interstitial. We're gonna talk about each of those. So, low bar pneumonia. What the heck is a low bar pneumonia? First of all, low bar pneumonia, most commonly caused by strep pneumonia. And that involves the entire lobe of a lung. Okay, so as we can see here, in this picture here, we have a nicely demarcated lobar consolidation. See, it only follows one lobe. The rest of these lobes are fine, only this lobe is a nice fat infection inflammation. Now, lobar pneumonia is going to follow four phases. Okay, first is going to be congestion. Phase one is congestion, first 24 hours. That's because of Again, you have infection, you get vascular dilation, you get edema. So it's going to fill up with all this fluid and it's going to get, you get congestion. Okay. All this fluid in this area. Next, stage two, red hepatization. This is day two to three. I'm going to change this again. And you're going to get, it's going to look a little red. And the reason why we call it hepatization is going to get a liver-like firm consistency rather than the normal spongy-like consistency of a lung. 
and that's because you get exudate from this inflammation and infection composed of neutrophils and blood, and they're going to fill up the alveolar air spaces. So again, red, he red hepatization from exudate composed of neutrophils and blood that fills up the alveolar air space. So now it's going to look red, and it's going to feel like a liver. It's going to feel firm like a liver. Stay two to three. Okay, next is a gray hepatization. That's day four to six. Okay, that is... It's going to be disintegration of all these red blood cells. They're going to disintegrate. And now it's going to turn kind of a grayish color. Here, I don't know. Not really grayish, but that's a gray hepatization. Finally, after that, you get resolution. The enzymes will digest this exudate. What do we say the exudate was made of? It was neutrophils in the blood that's now been digested. Enzymes are going to get rid of that. And, and finally, you get resolution or pneumonia. This is a lower pneumonia, okay? Now, next we're gonna to go to bronchopneumonia. Typical organisms in bronchopneumonia. Unfortunately, this is just brute force memorization here. Strep pneumonia, Staph aureus, H. flu, Klebsiella, okay. Bronchopneumonia from the name you can tell involves the bronchioles and then their adjacent alveoli. And it can be in one or more lobes. So remember that we said that the lobe of pneumonia was just one lobe, it's demarcated by that one lobe. Here it spreads along the bronchi so it can affect multiple lobes. See these, bron these pink bronchi. So it affects the bronchii and then their adjacent alve alveoli. In this case, we see all three lobes are affected. This is a bronchopneumonia. These are the organisms that can cause this. So note, the only thing to note is that strep pneumonia can cause either a bronchopneumonia or a lobar pneumonia. Finally, interstitial atypical pneumonia. Typical organisms, these are a little easier to remember because these are the weird organisms. You get mycoplasma, you get chlamydia, chlamydophila, and then viruses. Viruses cause interstitial pneumonia. And interstitial pneumonia involves diffuse areas of lung interstitium. And we said lung interstitium was a tissue that wasn't involved in, res in the respiration. And so, and the other thing to note about this disease, this interstitial pneumonia, is that it causes quite mild respiratory symptoms. Remember I was just telling you how before in pneumonia you get severe respiratory infection symptoms. So this one is doesn't cause that, it causes quite mild respiratory symptoms, hence the name atypical pneumonia. That's the other way we can call it. So again, it can be just diffuse, hits up all the in interstitial throughout the lung, and that's, what, and that's why you get a interstitial atypical pneumonia. The other name for this is a walking pneumonia, and we call it that because they're not, they're not so sick that they're bed bound, right? I just told you the other one, they're so sick they can't even get out of bed, they're so weak, they're sick. These guys are walking around, that's why you have a walking pneumonia. So, simple as that. Unfortunately, you have to understand these patterns, know these patterns, you have to memorize the organisms. At least this one's easy, it's one organism. This one's easier because these are the weird organism and the virus is caused in the atypical pneumonia. So that's easy enough. And then, that's pretty much it. So that's pneumonia.